Hi guys, welcome to this week's Real World Basics. Today we're going to be going over some basic recipe upgrades. So as you start to get more comfortable in the kitchen, you may start trying to make meals on the fly and you want to use up all of the ingredients that you have um, to maximize your budget. You don't want to waste food that you've spent good money on. So the recipes we're going to be going over today are tried and true by yours truly. Um, they're easy to make off of pretty standard recipes and they're budget friendly in my opinion. So today we're going to be going over how to upgrade spaghetti, uh, sandwiches, ramen noodles, a personal favorite of mine, um, pizza and fried rice. So I quite literally have a lot of things cooking right now. So let's see what we've got going on. So for making fried rice, this one is one of my favorites to make because it's super easy. I can always make like a giant pot of it and then eat it all week. But what you're gonna do is make some rice, which you can totally do if you don't have a rice cooker. You can do it in a pot on the stove. It is a two to one ratio. So you wanna use double the water for every amount of rice that you put in. So. I've got one cup of rice in here, two cups of water, and I'm just going to cook it until the water cooks down. And up on the front here is what I'm gonna be cooking my frozen veggies in. So these are great, you can buy whatever kind of veggies you want. I buy the frozen just because it's, it's cheaper and I can get a pretty great variety for it. So I've got my oil heating in the pan. You cook the frozen veggies according to the instructions on the bag, mine recommends um, Stove top. So we are going to get those cooking over here. And I like the fried rice because you can add in anything you want to bulk it up. Um, if you want to add some protein to it, you can uh, scramble up an egg beforehand and mix that in at the end. Um, I'm going to add in cashews to give it a little extra crunch um, just because I have cashews laying around. But you could also add in like a can of water chestnuts um, just to give it a little bit more um, flavor and, and texture to it. Um, and then once the uh, rice is cooked, the veggies are cooked down, you're going to throw everything into this one pot, mix it all together, and then you get to add your sauce, which is really whatever you like, whatever you have laying around. You can add just like plain soy sauce to it, tamari sauce. Um, teriyaki I have a um like a it's like a Thai peanut sauce I think it's actually like a salad dressing but it tastes really good so that's what I'm gonna mix in so we're gonna get all of this cooking and then I'm gonna show you once we throw it all together alrighty so our fried rice is ready to assemble the veggies are cooked down my frozen veggie mix had broccoli carrots peas in it and possibly string beans so what we are going to do is we're going to add our cooked rice to the pan with the veggies. And this is what I mean when I said you can make a giant pot of this and eat it all week long. So we've got our rice added and we are then going to mix it up a little bit. And at this point you can add in your um, little extra. So you could add in your scrambled egg, um, your water chestnuts, any other protein you might want, any extra veggies. Um, so I'm gonna add in some cashews to mine. And then once you have everything nice and mixed, that is when you're going to add your sauce. nice and mixed and now I'm going to add my Thai peanut sauce to it and you can add however much you want depending on how saucy or flavorful you like it and then you just go back to mixing and once everything is fully combined you are good to go definitely don't forget to turn off your heat source when you're done
So for upgrading spaghetti, the most important thing to me at least is the sauce. But I don't make my own spaghetti sauce from scratch as I am uh, not that excellent of a chef. But what I do to upgrade just jar spaghetti sauce to make give it a little bit more substance is you first add your sauce to a pan being careful to not splash the entire thing all over the place. And then add-ins are really what's going to make it pop and give it a lot more texture. So what you can do if you eat meat is you can like brown some hamburger you might have. Um, what I do because I don't eat meat is I will add canned tomatoes. You can add them with or without the juice in there. I like it because it adds um, a bit more uh, volume to my spaghetti sauce. So that gives it a lot more texture so it's not just kind of like a watery weak sauce. So you'll get that simmering in your pot. Um, some other things you can add in is if you have like an onion you can chop that up and add it in. Um, if you have any like Parmesan or cheese you can Add that to the sauce to make your sauce cheese flavored. Um, if you've got like garlic, you can mince garlic and put it in there. Um, something else I will do is add some uh, dried spices in. So we're also gonna get this simmering while the spaghetti is cooking. So the three main spices that I'll add to spaghetti sauce to give it a little something something is dried basil, Dried oregano is also really great. And garlic powder, just because I don't have any like other garlic I can add to it. So those three are probably some uh, gonna be a staple in making spaghetti sauce. So you add that in and then you really wanna let it simmer while your spaghetti is cooking. And the longer you can let it simmer, the better and then the more flavorful it's going to be. So you can also do this with a variety of other pasta sauces as well, not just spaghetti. Um, I have included a really neat um, spice and herb resource with today's video. So depending on the type of um, cuisine you're cooking, you can see what sort of spices and herbs complement it best. So we are gonna let that simmer and once it's right, we'll come back and I'll show you guys how to throw it all together. Alrighty, so our spaghetti has finished cooking and ideally our sauce would simmer for a couple of hours just to make sure all of the flavors from the herbs come out. But since we have our cooked noodles in here, what I like to do for uh, instead of putting your noodles on a plate and then the sauce on top is I like to combine them all together. So you take your sauce and you pour it onto your noodles keeping the bowls as close together as you can so that you don't create a giant mess when you pour spaghetti sauce into your pot. And then you mix it all together. And again, this gives you a giant pot of spaghetti that you can eat all week long. You could definitely add cheese at this point to mix it fully in and all of these meals can then be further upgraded by adding um, a side to them for the spaghetti you could add garlic bread for the fried rice you could add um, like a salad if you wanted to keep it light you could also get some like spring rolls or something like that just to make it an even bigger meal Once you are done mixing, you have a delicious pot of spaghetti. So while I don't have any frozen pizza to show you guys how to upgrade that today, I can definitely talk you guys through it. 
So while the pizza is still frozen, frozen because buying like a gourmet frozen pizza or even just like a fresh pizza can be pretty expensive and for plain frozen pizzas are pretty cheap. Um, you take out the frozen pizza, you get your oven preheating, you take off any ingredients you don't want while it's frozen, um, and then you add the ingredients you do want. So you can chop up any like fresh veggies, um, like a tomato, onion, um, you can put peppers on it if you want, olives, um, if you have any meat laying around, if you have any sausage or you uh, like bacon or anything like that, you can add all of that to your pizza while it's still frozen. And when you cook it, you just want to make sure that you add a little bit more time because you're adding more bulk to it and you want to make sure it fully um, defrosts and actually cooks because I've done that a couple times and it's not cooked if you just follow the time on the box. But um, so that's delicious. And then if you're reheating pizza you already have, you can either microwave it <laughs> or you can um, pop it back in the oven, which is what I found to be the tastiest way to reheat pizza, although it's pretty darn good cold. Uh, so you preheat your oven to 350 degrees and then you just pop it in there on a tray for maybe like seven to 10 minutes. And when you take it out, it tastes like exactly as fresh as when it was first delivered. So that's my hacks for upgrading frozen pizza. So to upgrade your sandwiches, there's a couple of different things you can do. You can do them all at once, or you can only do one at a time, depending on what kind of sandwich you're making. Um, the first one would be to toast your bread. It'll add that crunch to your sandwich, and depending on what you're making, it could be a total game changer all on its own. Um, adding any veggies that you have lying around will also kind of give it um, more texture, more flavor, and again, um, that could be all you need to do. You can add different types of spreads to your sandwiches to change the flavor. Um, it can, and it can all take a just a regular old ham and cheese sandwich to the next level. And a pro tip for if you are making a grilled cheese sandwich, um, let your cheese get to room temperature before you put it on the stove top because I've done that straight out of the fridge. You put it right into the pan. And then by the time the bread is cooked, not burnt, it's a perfect golden color, the cheese isn't all like gooey and melty inside of it. And every time I think I should have taken the cheese out of the fridge before I started this because you want it to be at the same kind of temperature as the bread so that it uh, cooks at the same time as the bread does. So that is how you upgrade your sandwiches. So to upgrade ramen noodles, if you are totally sick of eating them as is with the little packet that comes with them, what you can do is cook the noodles as you normally would, strain the water out, then what I like to do, well one of the things I like to do is then add some butter to it. And you can just scoop that in and it'll be melted by the hot noodles. And then you can take that eat it as is, or I like to add a couple other things to it. You can add some salt and pepper. And if you are feeling fancy, you can even add like a little bit of Parmesan cheese to give it a little cheese taste. And then you mix it all up while it's still hot and everything's all melty. And it just gives you something a little different than ramen noodles. So it melts real quick, um, quick, easy, uses stuff you're most likely gonna have laying around the house. And the salt and pepper just give it something other than a bland noodle taste. So there you have it, that's it with uh, butter, salt, pepper, and occasionally Parmesan cheese. The second way I like to spice up my ramen noodles is again, you cook them and strain them. And then I take chunky peanut butter, so it still has the peanuts in it. This one's kind of like an, uh, gonna add some soy sauce, but again, you can use whatever sauce you have laying around. I just like to use soy sauce for mine. You can add that to the peanut butter and then mix it up a little bit, or you can also just add it to the dish and the peanut butter will get melted by the hot noodles. So you mix it up. 
and then you can again add it to your noodles and it'll get melty when you mix it around. Um, it gives it kind of like a Thai peanut flavor, kind of like the fried rice I made. And if you have anything else laying around, like if you have green onions, you can chop those up and add it to your dish. Uh, sesame seeds, um, you can add protein to this. Um, some people will also add egg, like you could scramble an egg and mix it in with this. Um, but I see some people, they just add like a, an egg to their ramen and they really like that. I have not personally tried that, but I hear from many people that it's good. And then there you have it. You have a Thai peanut ramen dish. And that's how you, a couple different recipes to upgrade ramen. So once you start to get a few recipes down solid, you'll begin to feel more comfortable adding your own touches to them depending on your likes and your dislikes. And then you'll eventually start coming up with your own ideas or spin-offs of recipes that'll be true to you. So there may be some times it'll turn out really weird, but don't be afraid to keep trying. Definitely just make sure you write down somewhere what went wrong so you don't repeat um, your cooking uh, boo-boos. So that wraps, wraps up this week's Real World Basics where we upgraded a bunch of simple recipes and next week we're going to be going over grocery shopping and how to do it efficiently and effectively making sure you actually get everything you went in there for. So as always, if you have any suggestions for tutorials or how-to videos you'd like to see, please don't hesitate to reach out to the library, either by email or social media. See you guys next week.